So also, uh, I would like to, to share a screen a little bit at the beginning, right? During my introduction. So you can make me your co-host uh, for me to, to, to share the screen, right? Yes. Um, oh, how do I do that? Let me... So you go to... Shoot. Hi, everybody. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to worry. I'm, I'm new on the, the Zooming live streaming. So Alejandro here is trying to talk me through how to make him a co-host so he can, he can do what he needs to do here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, how do I do that? Yeah, you go to uh, more. Probably you see three dots that says uh, more and then uh, or in participant. Is it OK if I sit here? Let's see if I can make you, there we go. Uh, make co-host, okay. There, now you're co-host. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's already said, yes. Thank you. All okay. Right. All right, everybody. Well, I'm Emily Faulkner, and I am the director of the Cal Public Library. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live, too, if you're coming in. Um, Alejandro is going to take us on a tour of a coffee farm in Costa Rica. Uh, and if you have any questions, if you would go ahead and raise your hand um, or put something in the chat so I can call on you, um, I'll be able to unmute you then if you have a question you want to ask or a comment you want to make. And uh, I think this is going to be really lovely. Oh, um, Alejandro said it would probably be best for everybody to keep their cameras off, so I'm going to turn mine off also and, um, and make a speaker view so you can really see all the different beautiful plants and, and things that we're going to be looking at today. So Alejandro, I'll, I'll hand it over to you and, and uh, take it away. All right. Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Welcome to Costa Rica. My name is Alejandro. I will be your tour guide today. And uh, here we are in a coffee farm. So I'm again, Alejandro. I am at your service. Please feel free to ask me anything you want. Or if you want to comment or talk about something, uh, please feel free anytime. Raise your hand or chat or you can ask for to unmute and then uh, you can ask for comment whatever you want even if i'm talking uh you don't worry you can feel free to interrupt me at any time so here we are in costa rica and you are here in costa rica today too and uh before we start i would like to share uh, my camera just to just for you to be oriented and tell you more or less where we are right now so i will uh, just give me a sec i will share a screen it will take just three or four minutes uh, just to show you a few things Uh oh oh no i think we might have lost him hopefully he'll come right back i hope you'll stick around just for a second i think we might have had a little technical difficulty there The only problem with trying to do things in a outside is that sometimes the connectivity is not the best, huh? Give him just a minute to come back in. I'm looking forward to learning all about this because I have read about how coffee is made and I just watched a really neat um, documentary about tea, but I've never actually seen how, how coffee is grown and, and processed. I know they have to roast it and they do different things to get it out of its, uh, its pod, but I'm, I'm really excited to see what that looks like you know, in real time. So I'm, I'm sure you are too. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to check my email to make sure if he's not letting me know.
Let me see if I can find some exciting coffee in Costa Rica facts to keep us busy while we uh, wait for him to come back. Oh, that's interesting. Apparently, and I'm reading you the internet right now, so I apologize if this is iffy, but the internet tells me that Costa Rica is the only country in the world where it's illegal to produce any type of coffee other than the 100% Arabica, which is the highest quality of coffee beans, because um, they want Costa Rican farmers to pursue excellence, which makes some sense. Oh, here he is. Let's let him back in. Hi, Alejandro, are you back? Yes, yeah. Uh, in some point, yeah, we lost the connection or something. Uh, in what part uh, I was lost? You were you were switching and sharing your screen, and then we lost you. So you you didn't see the screen. Uh, just for a second, and then it and then it went away. Yeah, you saw the Costa Rican map, and that's it. No, 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 no. We didn't see the map yet. No. Okay. So let's let me try it again. If not, so we'll skip that part. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Okay, if you can hear me, you can chat. So, so this is Costa Rica. We are in Alajuela province. This is where we are right now. In Alajuela province, painted in blue. This is Costa Rica. We have seven provinces, Punta Arenas, Limón, Cartago, San Jose, Alajuela, and Guanacaste. A province is a, is a state, like a, in, in a state in the United States. North of Costa Rica, we have Nicaragua. South, we have Panama. To the east, the Caribbean coast and the Pacific side. And Alajuela is the place we are. In the center of the country, in the middle of the mountains, coffee, coffee area. And today we'll see the plants, the coffee, the cherries or the berries. And we'll talk a little bit about the process of this delicious beverage. Right? So that was it with the with the screen. All right. So you saw it, right? Yes, yeah, we saw that. So you saw that. Okay, now you are more or less oriented where we are right now. I'm going to flip the camera. Any questions at this point, my friends? No, nope, not that I can see. Not yet. All right. Okay, first, uh, start with the beginning, right? So I will show you uh, from the very beginning uh, the process of coffee. It's similar everywhere in the, in the coffee countries. Here is what they call almacigo or nurseries, right? But first, before that, so we have the seeds. Those are the seeds of coffee. This one, this is the coffee seed that is ready to be fermented and dry it and roast it and drink it. This is what we call cherry, or some people call it berry. Then we have the, the green seed. This one is not ready, but also could be processed. Inside each cherry, you have, you have something like this. Two seeds inside. Two seeds inside each. Each of these contains two seeds. 
two seeds per cherry. See? From each one, you can get a plant. You plant one and you have one tree. You plant the other and you have. So for per, per cherry, you can plant two different trees or bushes, right? So the pickers, so the people, like the one you saw in the picture, in the photo, they pick up always the, the red uh, cherries, right? This one is edible. You can eat it. Actually, I'm going to eat that one uh, for you to see. Look, this one, I'm going to eat it. Mm. It's sweet. Mm. See, you can eat the pulp and you can eat the, the peel. Has nothing to do, the flavor has nothing to do with, uh, with the flavor of coffee in your cup. It's, it's kind of a candy. It's like a candy. It's delicious. So the pickers, sometimes they are working and eating or chewing uh, or sucking those, those, those seeds. With the roasting and all that, so it gets bitter. But in, in that stage, is is even sweet, almost like a candy. So then they plant in nurseries like this one. And when it's big enough, maybe four to six months, they put it on the ground. For new plants, it takes the very, very first uh, season will be in four years. And then it will be every year, sometimes twice a year. So first, the seed, the seeds, and then they put it in nursery about four or five, six months later. So they put it on the ground. So let's check how a plantation looks like. This is a, a, a farm of some of my friends uh, before we start. So let me tell you about them. This is the four generations of growers of coffee. So these people is like a, the grand grandfather uh, and then the grandfather and then the son and now, so it's like a, the fourth generation of coffee producers of this farm. It is about five hectares, maybe 12, 15 acres of coffee. Here, what you see from here, coffee here and coffee there, and, and a street, this is called a street in the coffee, in the coffee farms. So the, the pickers, so the people who work here, they, they are assigned for one street every day. So, and you take, or you pick up the, the cherries only in your street. So for example, Emily will have one street, Alejandro, the other street, and the other guy, other street. So each one is in charge of one street uh, during the whole the whole season of coffee, right? So this is the very beginning of coffee. Now, as I told you, these people, let's check around a little bit of the how they process. Oh, here, if you like plants, for example, because we can talk about different plants too, the hydrangeas. Emily and I, we were talking about before, uh, my friends, you, you, you join us. So we were talking about this beautiful plant, hydrangeas or hortensias. Beautiful and all of that, right? But some of you know something about this one, something interesting about this plant. If you know something, just let us know what you hear about this, because this plant happened that few years ago, uh, especially in Europe, they found teenagers, especially drying this and smoking this plant, smoking this plant, which is extremely dangerous because it contains cyanide, so it can kill people. So they do it apparently for a nice ride, but that nice ride can you know, kill people. 
So in some countries, it's prohibited to market this plant, right? Hydrangea, very nice, but could be dangerous depending how you use it. Has some medicinal uses in order to, to reduce fevers and headaches, use it as a cataplasm externally, right? But must be careful with that, right? So all the plants, they have something medicinal or something dangerous, right? Do you know that about hydrangeas? I'm going to say, I did not know that. I thought you were saying that if you plant them in more acidic soil, they're a different color. <laughs> yeah, in different colors and all that. But but yeah, so there are many things we, we still don't know about plants. So this is the place. So we are going to enter there. The place where they process the coffee after the pickers take it from the plant. So they plant it, they grow and they pick it. And once here, so probably they are working. So you will hear something like a, some noise is not connectivity, is the noise of the machines, right? So here's the entrance. So they have some bags already. This is ready to sell. They export. This is this coffee here. This brand is called Las Peñas. Las Peñas coffee. So let me let me show you. It's a family business and they have this brand, their own brand called Las Peñas. They only export this thing. Here. But as I know, they have this roaster that is over 100 years old and it's still working. They roast the coffee here in this, in this uh, uh, roaster, 100 year old, minimum. Okay. Once they pick the coffee, they bring it here to clean. They clean the coffee here. They put it here inside the coffee seed, the coffee cherries. They go down. They flow it with water and they clean the clean and separate the coffee bean. So this is the first process to separate the coffee. Any question, my friends? So they wake the coffee and they clean it here. They feel that this is a tank. They fill it with water, right? And they clean it here. Then the Las Peñas meal. Then they separate the coffee in those machines. They separate the coffee uh, per size. Uh, the bigger and smaller seeds, they go in different panels. So they have to separate. Yeah. We've got, a, we've got a question here. Uh, Michelle's asking, how long the beans stay fresh after roasting? roasting? How, how, how was? Can, can how you repeat me, please? Sorry. How long do the beans stay fresh after they've been roasted? And after they pick it up? Yeah, after, yeah, after they're... Well, when they... After when they're they, done roasting, how long do they stay fresh for? Okay, once you pick up the, the coffee, so it has to go immediately. The same day you pick up the coffee has to come here the very same day. The very same day, because it's not, so it... It loses the properties and gets dry even with the air or with the sun. So the coffee, once you pick it up, the same day you cannot store it. You cannot store the coffee, the the cherry, the cherries we saw over there. You cannot store that. So it has to go the very same day 
Uh, it's getting a little broken up, unfortunately. Good. Yeah, okay. So the coffee has to be processed the very uh, immediately. Once the picker goes to the bush, the tree, pick it up, has to come here immediately. The same day, you cannot store the, the fresh coffee to process next day or anything else. So it has to be the same day and then uh, start the process because if not, so will be damaged. Basically, next day will be damaged. Then the coffee, once the coffee is already uh, dry in seeds, so it could last year, right? So once it's dried, so you have no problem with that. Or even if it's roasted, roasted or not roasted, the, the coffee uh, lasts uh, even year. So, but the problem is that the, the, you cannot keep the coffee fresh, right? So here, they are drying. This is the sound here. They are drying. This is a dryer. Why you can hear the, the noise. They have to dry after the cleaning process and the separation. They put it here in those ovens for about 50 hours. 50 hours of drying. In this one, this is one type of machine. Probably the most common machines that, that you will see is this one. Also, this one is an oil oven. So it, it, it moves and it dries the coffee. Has to be 50 hours in that process until the, the seed has 11% of humidity and then is ready. Here is how they pack. Most people, they export the coffee before roasting. They don't roast the coffee to export. In this shoot, uh, this, one, this one goes to, let's say, to Amsterdam. Five is the country, Costa Rica, as a code five, probably Colombia or Brazil or Jamaica, they have different codes. Costa Rica is the five. 450 is the exporter, is this family. And this is the package. So this is how they export the coffee. After it's dry and before the roasting, they export the coffee. Once the coffee or the seed gets there, let's say to Amsterdam, so they roast and then they pack it, right? Normally it's like that. Oh, we have the owner there, so we can go and say hello. Also, the other way to, to dry coffee is like this, under the sun. Let me show you a little bit of the summer of Costa Rica. Uh, let me zoom. An overview of, of the sun. <laughs> How do you like that? I'm doing this to see if it can melt a little bit of the snow you have. <laughs> so here they are, they are uh, drying the coffee also, but not with the machine we saw over there. Let me see, I'm outside. We have the machine, they are drying over there, but also the other way to do it, but it takes several days, not in 50 hours like this machine does, but it takes days. That is the owner. Mr. Herbert, the peel and the, and the meat that surround the seeds is used as an organic compound to enrich the, the soil, right? So let's say hello to the owner. Hello, Mr. Herbert. Hello, Alejandro. 
Hi, I have friend here from the United States. Hola. <laughs> He's saying hello. <laughs> Hola. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. You know what pura vida means, my friends? Pura vida is, is, is a greeting in Costa Rica that you can use it for everything. Hello, goodbye, I'm fine, thank you. Whatever you want to say that is optimistic is pura vida, right? So this is from outside um, of, the, of the coffee hangar. ¿Y qué estás haciendo ahí? What are you doing there? He is, he is measuring the humidity of coffee. ¿Cómo, cómo lo haces? How, how do you do that? He is explaining how he measures the humidity. He put the, the seeds here. Mm -hmm. Just to see is has the turn on the machine. Well, it's too sunny here. I don't know if you can see the number. Arabica. Arabica coffee. Ahí lo está midiendo. Y dice que tenemos en 10.7 de por 10.7. 10.7 humidity. Está a 87.9 grados Fahrenheit. 87 Fahrenheit. Wow. So most be at 11 more or less with coffee. Ya está listo. Ya se puede guardar. It's ready. So in between 10 and 12, so they can uh, finish the process of the drying. Uh, ¿Cuánto? Eight days took those seeds to have that almost 11% of humidity, which supposed to be the best coffee in the world with that uh, humidity. So this is very important in coffee flavors, the, uh, the humidity and the acidity. Right, so it's a, it involves a lot of labor, right, to do that. And very, the standards of coffee are very strict. So, look, he has to do. He does that, and with his two sons and a couple of helpers. But it's a it's a family business. So as he's ready, already, so. He needs to pick it up and, and continue, you see? We are lucky that we, they are working today, right? So, después de esto, ¿qué le vas a hacer? Y lo dejas guardado. So, after this, he will pack it. He put it in, the, in bags. En las bolsas grandes, ¿verdad? Sí. Todo el café necesita un reposo de tipo tres meses. Y después le quitan la piel. Yeah. Yeah. So, after this, so has the, the right humidity, 11% almost. He will pack it in those big bags for three months. The big, big bags that you have there. The white ones. Right? They pack it for three months and then they peel it again. They remove the peel. The peel uh, that is still attached to the, to the seed. And finally, they pack it in those small bags to export. Alejandro. So that, yes. I just wanted to say we have a, we have a comment. For Somebody who says that you're shoveling the beans look a lot like us shoveling snow up here. <laughs> so instead of having to clear off your driveway, you can you can shovel the beans instead. Excuse me, can you repeat me, please? I was inside <laughs> with that noise. So the way you shovel the beans looks like us shoveling our driveways off all the snow. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> the same kind of exercise. <laughs> yeah, they are telling me that they are doing the same, but with the snow. Hacen lo mismo con esto, pero con la nieve. 
<laughs> en este momento. De yeah, this is our snow process, but with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, do you understand what he said? You cannot sell the snow, but we sell the coffee. <laughs> we we'll the... put you some snow, just let us know where you want us to put it. Ah, <laughs> do, do what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here we we shovel the coffee, but just we sell it. <laughs> so here's the this is our honor, right? This is the result of the peel of the coffee cherries and the meat that surrounds the seeds. So basically, they will spray this into the fields, right? So there is no waste here. Back in the day, this material that is the peel, the one that I ate. At the very beginning, remember that I, I ate uh, the peel of the of the coffee and the meat. So now they put it here, they ferment it, and they put it on the ground to enrich the soil. Back in the day, it used to go to rivers, and it uh, produced a lot of contamination. Now it's well, now it's better. Now they use everything, and they try not to contaminate anything. So, yeah, as I told before, we are lucky they are working today. So we were able to see them working, right? It's a lot of labor, my friends. Here, the pickers, like a, like a worker in a coffee plantation, uh, they are paid by basket. Remember the photo that I showed you before at the very beginning? They pick up the coffee and they pay per basket. Each basket, basket, you have to fill it with 28 pounds. 28 pounds of coffee and they pay $2 per basket. A person with experience, can, with a lot of experience, can pick up maybe 25, basket so at the end of the day that worker will get fifty dollars two dollars per basket right now seems like a too little small salary but for example in, in some other coffee countries like vietnam for example they pay for the same basket 28 pounds 30 cents per basket 30 cents that pay in Vietnam for $2 here, so it's not that bad. And here, the farmer has to pay the health insurance and many other things, right? Sometimes they provide with the house to the farm, put to the, to the pickers and things like that. So it's not completely bad, right? And <clears throat> let's say that the whole family works in a coffee farm. So father, mother, two or three kids. So all together could make, you know, a decent money. If you pick up 20 baskets and they were 10 and they were eight, they were 15. So among them, so they could do something interesting, right? We receive in Costa Rica a lot of people from Panama and from Nicaragua. They come in this season, which is right now, to work in the coffee fields, right? So especially the people from Panama, they work two or three months, they save the money, and they go back to their countries with the money for almost the rest of the year. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a good business. Yes, let's put it that way. It's a good business. Oh, I love this tree. Any idea what is this? This is a fruit. This is guava, the fruit. Look how it feels. Guava, guava tree. Very popular in Latin America for mermelades and juices. So now, 
I want you to have the experience to go deep into the farm, into a coffee farm. There are different varieties. Before, uh, any question, my friends, about everything, whatever it is? Any comment? No, not at the moment. I think we're all just taking it all in and looking at that beautiful path you're on. Look, this, this tree. Oh, I'm sorry, I spoke too soon. I've got a question here. Let, uh, let me unmute them. Yeah. There we go. I think it unmuted now. Um, I was curious. You said that they have to clean the cherries right away in like that same day. Is that because it for ferments very quickly? It ferments quickly. Uh, remember that the seed, the cherry, contains a uh, certain meat and the peel around the seed. So okay. once you pick up, of course, the, if if the if the cherry is red already, mm -hmm. if it's ripe already. So it continues the process, right? Uh -huh. Especially when you take it out of the tree. So the process continue, will be overripe very, very soon. So that's why, and as you saw, the standards of the coffee producers are very, very strict. Even the humidity, right? Yeah. And all of those things. So an overripe seed or overripe cherry, mm -hmm. it, could ruin your production, right? So once you pick it up, so you take it there to be processed, right? When, when the, the, and this is very important about your question, when the cherry is still green, right? So could last maybe more. For example, this one is red, and is ready or almost ready to be picked up. But if you pick up the green one, right, will still work the next day or two or three days, but it loses humidity already here, right? So normally to have a, a good control of your production, the seed must be like this, you pick it up today in the afternoon, you take it to the cleaning process to remove the peel and the meat around mm. before it gets fermentation and things like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. Do they ever make any kind of like alcohol or liquor with the fermenting fruit? Mm. Well, not, not exactly. They, they are now, well, some time ago, they are producing, uh, not in this farm, but in many other places, liquors with flavor of coffee, right? But, uh, but it's not that by fermentation, it's by adding just pure coffee, right? No, not fermented. It's just the flavor of coffee with alcohol, right? Not, not like a fermented uh, coffee, right? But yeah, coffee. Mm. Sorry, I, I'm eating, I, I am eating those, those cherries that I, I pick up. <laughs> Sorry. We, have, we have another question here. Somebody asked, is your coffee mild or strong? Does that depend on, on the farm or on how you roast it? How, how do you get a strong coffee versus a milder coffee? Well, yeah, very important. Thank you for that question. Um, the it depends of the of the roast, dark roast or or middle roast. It depends of the roasting, not the coffee itself, right? So it depends how many minutes you roast your seeds. A difference, like uh, for for a mid or classic. That's the new name for mid roasted. The classic is about 15 minutes. Dark roast is 19 minutes. In those four minutes, you pass, you go from classic taste or meal to dark roast. So it changes the, the flavor immediately. Just four minutes of 
of roasting changes everything. So it has nothing to do with the altitude of the coffee or the quality of coffee is how much you roast it. So that's why they say dark roast or middle roast or, or French roast, which is like a light roast, right? So it has to do with the time you keep it in roast, right? That changes the flavor. So now, see, I'm in the middle of the coffee. Put my camera up. Just coffee, coffee everywhere. So it's not every day, my friends, that we have the opportunity to be in the middle of nothing, just mountains and walking in coffee. This one, my friends, is an overripe seed. Uh, let me look for the right uh, light here. It's kind of funny. So I don't know if you can see. Can you see it? Yeah, that's almost black or purple. This is overripe. It doesn't work anymore, right? And it was here, see? It's overripe, it's dry, so, so they lost it. So my friends, you can tell that you were in the middle of or millions of plants of coffee. A coffee plant, an old fact about the coffee is that, that one tree of those can produce coffee for 60, 70 years or more, right? The first time lasts four years and then continue producing for even more than 70 years. Now, what happened? Coffee producers, they cut the tree from the ground, from the root, and they replace uh, the trees, depending on the brand, maybe four years or somewhere six or seven years, they cut the trees and they replant it again. Because they say that it's uh, older trees, older than 10 years, it doesn't produce a uh, good quality. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that, but they say so. Can yeah. you tell us what the, the cherry tastes like? What does the fruit taste like? It's sweet. It's sweet. It's delicious. It's almost like a candy, right? So, so not like when a tart you... kind of flavor, like more, more like a strawberry than a... It is it's sweet. It's like a... Like, like maybe like a strawberry, not too sweet, right? Not too sweet. It's not acid, no acidity at all. And, and it's a, a milk sweet. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I mean, you see it? And you can eat the peel. The thing is, it contains even more caffeine than the seed in itself. So it's full of caffeine, right? So by the way, uh, do you know uh, how or why caffeine affects people? How, what they do, why people say, this is a question for you all my friends. Why people say, well, I cannot drink caffeine or coffee after 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Why is that? Why caffeine affects people? What happened there? Can someone, Explain us how or why caffeine affects people. That's the question for you, my friends. I give you three minutes, and if someone has the answer, just let us know. All right? All right. So we are, this is, well, there are many other varieties. Ethiopia from Ethiopia. Happened that here in Costa Rica, the coffee was brought in 1779, long time ago, 1779, they brought directly from Ethiopia two pounds of coffee in order to check if it was possible to grow coffee here. 
And as you can see, yes, it was possible, right? So they came from Ethiopia. Apparently, according to the legend, the coffee is native from Ethiopia, right? So this is the, the coffee from the from the very from the very Ethiopia, and it's called Arabica. We have two varieties, two major varieties of coffee in the world. Arabica, which is this one, Arabica, which is supposed to be the, the best of the best, and Robusta. Robusta is the coffee that normally Brazil produce, Robusta. Robusta, it produces their bigger trees, produce a lot of coffee, more quantity, easier to, to produce, if easier to cultivate, and and is uh, stronger against diseases. But the flavor is not the same. So the, the best quality is this one, is Arabica. And in Costa Rica, only Arabica is allowed by law. By law, we cannot uh, cultivate or grow Robusta variety by law. Now, this is the family, the house, the family's house. This is a, a typical house in a farm. The colors, white and blue. What you see, my friends, is a very, very typical. Couldn't be more typical than this. The coffee farm and the white and blue house. the porch, couple of seats and plants around. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Herbert. And of course, the view of the valley. Nice, huh? We are in the mountains in the north of San Over there, there, down there, are the cities of Alajuela and San Jose. The old mountains that you see in front are the south. In Costa Rica, we have five million people. Two million and a half, they live in that valley that you see down. Two million and a half there. In the rest of the country, we have the other or two million and a half. Why people live there? Or most people live in the Central Valley? Well, because of this, the this is richer. Uh, you can grow not only coffee, but uh, any kind of plants you can grow there. So, and the weather is super nice. Not too hot, not too cold, not too windy. Uh, so it is better. We've got a couple, I've got an answer for you and two questions. All right. Okay. All right. So the, the, the first question is what's the temperature today? Yes. Okay. We are about, uh, we have two temperatures right now. So at this very moment, we are in 28 Celsius, which is, we are talking about almost 90, right? Fahrenheit. Yeah. Maybe 80, 85, 80, 86. Plus 22, I think. <laughs> to, to 28. But the thermical sensation, the thermical is what you feel on your skin is about 22 because it's windy right now. So it cool off a lot. So it's a perfect weather today because even if the, the thermometer, you know, shows you uh, almost 90 Fahrenheit, so it feels uh, way less than that. So it feels uh, windy, it's still sunny. It's just perfect, right? So yeah, it's a, it's a nice, nice temperature today. Okay, yeah. the next question is when they're, when they're talking about making the used berries into fertilizer, do those need to be mixed with other things to be turned into fertilizer or do they just use it the way it is when they when they put it on that pile to make it into fertilizer? 
They use it the way it is. They use it the way it is. They can also mix with this, with some other, some other pros, like a list and things like that. But uh, in this farm, they use it directly. Uh, they don't mix it with anything. I know our farms, they mix it with leaves. They take leaves and they take even garbage. But for that, you need uh, 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 a person that who really, really knows about chemistry and things like that, because it's not, so it could even ruin your production, right? right? So they use it just like that. They don't mix it with everything. They take a shovel and they, and they, they spray it in the farm. But of course, more technical things can be done and better, better organic produce. So mix it with leaves and, and all things, right? Uh, all natural, but uh, you need a, someone to hire someone expert in that, right? So it's not, it's not just mix a leaf with that compound and many other things, even if everything is organic, so could ruin your production. Right? right, so yeah, here they use it just alone. And then, the, then we've got the guess about the caffeine. It says caffeine increases your heart rate, and he says we switch to cerveza after five o'clock. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's cool. Yes, yes. So that's our Any guess. Other? Yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah, it, it, that's right. So, but the thing is, caffeine, caffeine is is a molecule with the name of 137 trimethylxanthine, right? That's the name of caffeine. We know it uh, with the name of caffeine, but the name is 137 trimethylxanthine. Is the chemistry now uh, name. Now, happened that the caffeine, that molecule, is very similar to a molecule of a natural occurring molecule that is called adenosine. Our body produces adenosine all the time. Adenosine is a molecule that tells you that you are tired. Adenosine goes to the brain receptors and gets to the brain receptor and tells you and lets you know that you are tired. What happened is that caffeine, this is caffeine is very similar to the molecule of adenosine. So it's very easy for caffeine to attach or block your brain receptors before adenosine gets there. So what happened is the adenosine cannot get to your brain receptors and let you know that you are tired. So it blocks the brain receptors because they are similar. Caffeine and adenosine, they are very similar in a structure, right? So that's why you drink caffeine, and then you never get the signal that you have to, to rest or to sleep, right? So that is how or why or that's the chemistry of caffeine. Just because of similarity of the molecule that gives the signal to, to, to relax or to sleep, right? Question about that? This is That's very interesting. I never heard that before. Thank you. Welcome. So this is the orchid tree. This is a tree. It's still small. And it's called the orchid tree. It's not a, it's not an orchid, but it's the common name. Maurginia philippica. This one people use it to treat diabetes. They cut the leaves, they take six leaves, one liter of water, and they drink it half cup in the morning and half in the afternoon to have uh, low levels of sugar. It's not the cure against diabetes because we have not the cure, but it's just a treatment, something to help and is very effective uh, in the treatment of diabetes. So everything that you see, my friends, is important, everything because can be used for something, even hydrangeas, right? <laughs> Here in the coffee 
plantation, normally, probably you saw those banana plants, right? We saw some of them. They put the banana or plantain plant in the middle of the plantation because that uh, the plant of banana provides with acidity to the soil. More acidity, better coffee or better quality, right? So that's why uh, every time you go to a coffee farm, you see a lot of banana or plantain uh, plant, right? Look how beautiful is this. I show you. To the, to the sky, it's like I, I'm walking with my head up. This is beautiful. Oh, man. Uh, we have a, a latecomer who was asking what you use hydrangea for. I'm going to let you take that one, Alejandro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thing. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> oh man, look at this. I don't know if you heard about the um, yellow bark, yellow bark three. Look how beautiful it is. These people here, they live like in a paradise. Nice trees. A lot of coffee. <clears throat> this is probably, you know, this one, because this one is very common in the United States. States, Dracaenas, right? This one is red Dracaena. It's decorative, but also could be edible. The root is edible and can be used to, to make, you know, breads and cakes and things. It, but it's I'm going to, uh, to have a beautiful view of the Central Valley. Now, the other thing that coffee does in some people, only in some people, is that coffee or once some people take coffee or drink coffee they go to the bathroom have you seen that only three out of ten people they have that let's say condition that they go to the bathroom immediately they drink coffee any idea why why coffee sends to the bathroom to some people. Huh? No, nope. uh, can you guess it? Nope. <laughs> we, we already said why, or we said more, more or less. It's because it's very acid, right? So the coffee is acid, better acidity, better coffee. And what happened? They the body, the stomach produces chlorogenic acid in order to dismantle the food, to break down the elements, right? So with that, and in addition, the acidity of coffee, so that's what makes people go to the bathroom. So the boost of acidity is a signal 
for peristalsis, the contraction and relaxation and relaxation of the intestine. So that's why some people, they go to the bathroom immediately after they drink coffee. Three out of 10 people in the world, they have that condition. That's not bad, it's just something that happened to some people, right? Boost of acidity and that's why. From here, we can see part of the, of the, we are deep, deep inside of the coffee. Look. And the valley. To more or less to here, when I have pointing you here, is an active volcano. You see that cloud is Irasu volcano. It's an active volcano. But my friends, I have a surprise for you. Just, uh, I need my two hands for, for a minute because I have a surprise for you. So I am leaving you he here a little bit. Just one minute with this view. Meanwhile, I prepare, uh, let's see. Meanwhile, I prepare the surprise that I have for you. Uh, meanwhile, if you have a question or something, uh, please let me know. Anything you uh, you want to add? Uh, somebody's asking, what is the terrace part over kind of to the left of our view? It looks like there's a terrace or trees. Are those the coffee trees or is that something else? Okay, let's see. That's coffee. That okay. terrace is how they grow coffee. Traditionally, is is that way. That's coffee. It's a terrace. So that's the, the most typical way to, to, to grow the coffee, right? Because in Latin America, it's growing the mountains. So this is it's not, not only or necessarily flat, like in Brazil, uh, their coffee is in flat areas, but in the rest of Latin America, it's like this. So this is the typical, typical, thank you for asking that. So is the typical look of a coffee plantation like that. You see the streets, what, I, what we talked before, the streets, one street for each worker, for example, or for a couple of workers, and they were there. So yeah, that is the typical look of the coffee plantation. Here they have new small, small plants here, Probably they are preparing this area for a new uh, a new section. Okay, we have another question. Uh, somebody yeah. asked, do you, do you roast the beans before they sell them, or do they sell them and and then send them to other people to roast? <clears throat> normally, normally back in the day they used to uh, they used to roast and send the coffee already ready to prepare, ready to brew. Now, the fashion now is to sell or export the coffee green, right? Dry and green without the roasting, without the toasting or roasting. Once the coffee gets there to, let's say, United States, people, they roast it even at home or in, a, or in, a, or in an industry, they roast it and they pack it. That's the most common way today, right? Back in the day, they used to say, but now these people, for example, these uh, Las Peñas coffee, they, when they ask for coffee, uh, they can send it roasted. If people want, they want two pounds, they send two pounds already ready to brew, or they can send roasted, or they can send it green for people to roast at home. So yes, both. Uh, both possibilities. What is the image? Sorry. Yes. So yeah, but the most common in, in big industries is to to sell the coffee green, and the buyer roast the coffee. 
And then I have one more question, which is there was some sort of big bird going by when we were looking at the valley. What oh, kind of bird oh yeah, that? that one. Let me see if I can. Those are those are vultures. Uh, let me see if I can do. This one is coming in our direction. This is turkey vulture. Turkey vulture. And we have also black vulture. Let's see. This one is coming. Can you see it? Mm. Yeah, we saw it a second ago. We we have those here too. Yeah. So that's a little piece of Costa Rica here in, in DeKalb. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now you ask about vulture. I also ask about vultures. Why? Well, you know, vultures, they eat, you know, rodent meat, only dead meat, right? Everybody knows that, right? The vultures, they eat dead cows, they do dead dogs, or everything that is decompo decomposing, they eat it. Why they don't get sick? Any idea why a vulture eating a dead horse full of diseases, bacteria, and viruses, the vulture don't get sick? Huh? That's the question. Well, someone's asking if they eat some of the coffee <laughs> fruit. Does that help them out? Huh? Somebody, asking, somebody says, do they eat the coffee fruit too? So maybe maybe they eat some of the fruit and it, it helps their stomach? <clears throat> well, uh, not exactly, but you are well oriented. The thing is, as we talked before about the chlorogenic acid that the body produces to break down food, uh, in a human being, the acid, the pH is about one in the scale, which is very acid. But a vulture producing acid in the stomach with the acidity in between zero and 0 0.8. So that means that the acid or the chlorogenic acid in the stomach vulture is so acid that can, you know, kill whatever it is inside. Virus, bacteria, uh, no matter what the disease is, the acid of the stomach of the vulture can kill it, right? So it does the reason because the vulture produces very, very acidic compound and kills basically everything that goes into their stomach. So that, that is the reason they don't get sick, right? Amazing, right? So I'm now, <laughs> see if I can prepare the, the surprise for you. Let's see, just one sec, just in one sec, I will be ready for this surprise for you, my friends. Uh -huh. Almost, let's see, almost ready. Uh, that's why I put that nice view for you. Me, why I prepare everything and I think I have it. All right. As you know, I'm a coffee drinker. Um, like at the rest of Costa Ricans, I drink coffee five to seven times a day. So here today, I have this coffee to prepare. This is the old fashioned way to prepare coffee. And it's called Cafe Chorriado. I'm going to prepare it right now. And I'm going to explain to you how is the traditional and most typical way to prepare coffee in Costa Rica. Most people, they have or do we have coffee maker, friend press, and many other things. But this one is the most traditional and the way that Costa Ricans love to drink coffee. It's called Café Chorreado. First thing you need is this thing to hold the holder. This is wood to put 
the cotton bag. This is made with cotton. The cotton bag goes here in the holder. You have this to receive the coffee. You have the coffee uh, today. I'm using the, the these people, Cafe Las Peñas. See, this is, and then look. I have here, here the coffee with the spoon. Just one sec, please. Good. I'm just using my two hands to to grab the coffee. Okay, now look. Coffee, ground coffee, is middle rose. It's not that rose. One here, I use one spoon, one spoon per cup. But uh, as I like a strong coffee, so I will put two full spoons here in the in the coffee in the in the cotton bag, right? So I have it here. And I have, of course, the hot water that I have it here in my backpack. See? And it goes there. One trick, if you want even a stronger, you can pass it twice or even three times if you want. So you put it from here again to extract more of the of the coffee here. And I have the coffee ready. Huh? What do you think? So to give you just a demonstration of a stronger coffee, I put this old cup here, and then I will pass it twice. And you're making some people jealous. <laughs> Everybody's saying they wish they could taste the coffee. <laughs> My friend, this coffee is for you. So feel, you can feel like a, you are here drinking coffee with me in the shade of this beautiful uh, orange tree with a view of the Central Valley, enjoying a perfect day. So then I have it ready. And then this is the, the most important thing is this. Oh man, salud. Salud, my friends. <laughs> ah, this is a perfect day in a, in a farm. So I'm here in the shade of this tree with a beautiful view, nice wind, delicious coffee, and that's it. This is life, my friends. Any question? Let's chat a little. Tell me something. Something about you, my friends. Huh? I have one question about, uh, do people put like milk or sugar in their coffee there or do mostly people just drink it straight? Most people, they drink it with sugar. Most people drink it. I am not, but now it's gaining popularity, a stevia flower, the stevia leaves. Sorry, stevia is a plant uh, that is 400 times sweeter than the sugar. And uh, people, for example, with diabetic, with diabetes, they can uh, drink it. So it's a plant, you can look for it in internet, stevia, stevia, S-T-E-V-I-A, or stevia, right? in the Spanish pronunciation, stevia or stevia. Uh, it's a plant and it's recommended for people with diabetes, 
or in a in in with certain type of diet. So and it's delicious. It doesn't change the the flavor of your drink. So now mm, a lot of people they are using that because sugar is is good, but it's not necessarily good to anyone, right? So yeah. But in my case, I like it they both uh, today uh, just without sugar uh, because I want to too much talking about coffee makes me feel the desire to feel the coffee flavor. So I'm not adding sugar today. Mm. Uh, um, in, what, in, yes, yeah, tell me. Well, I was going to say, what, what age do, do people usually start? You know, do, do kids drink it? Is it a grown up thing? You know, what, what age does, does coffee start being part of the routine? In Costa Rica, uh, I've been in several countries, in the coffee countries, and they allowed people only after 12, right? Before that, they don't allow kids to drink coffee. But Costa Rica is an exception. In Costa Rica, even babies, they drink black coffee, right? Babies, babies, right? So the mother provides with coffee to them. So here, everybody, since the very babies to very old, right? In Costa Rica. So if you go, for example, to Colombia, in Colombia, 12 or 14, and before that, they don't drink coffee. And the thing is, they uh, parents, they don't allow them to drink coffee. But in Costa Rica, they do, even babies. Yeah. Coffee is also related with a certain uh, medicinal treatments, right? So to or prevention of certain type of cancer. Also um, in the cosmetic uh, uses, right? They combine the the frozen up on my computer. I think it might be my internet, though. When it's red, it doesn't disappear exactly the wrinkles, but probably tenses a little bit the skin, right? And it, because it contains antioxidants and many other things, so probably it has a, some effect on you and you feel like a, a, little, a little younger. Also, it is for exfoliate the skin so you look the younger. So now it's, it's used it with that purpose too. Uh, we have a question here about, I guess it's sort of, you know, somebody was asking if the coffee keeps the babies awake. Um, how do you make decaf coffee? Is that something people drink there or is that only American? <laughs> well, here they don't like decaf and we don't produce decaf coffee. What we do is uh, to, that process is kind of complex and very expensive to extract the caffeine from coffee. So what we do is that most of the industries, the coffee industries here, they send the coffee to Germany. In Germany, the country in Europe, they decaf the coffee. And then uh, that process we pay with the same caffeine, right? It's a good deal for Costa Rica because they pay with the caffeine and they sell in Germany, they sell the caffeine to Coca-Cola and some more industries, right? Because the process uh, involves a lot of chemistry and a lot of energy, mainly um, a lot of energy. They had to heat waters and oils in order to extract the caffeine from the coffee. So we send the coffee, right? They decaf the coffee. They send the coffee back we sell the coffee without caffeine, but we didn't do the process. You know what I mean? And we pay the process and the, and the chip, the chipment with the same caffeine, right? 
and they sell the caffeine to other industries like Coca-Cola or many others, right? But uh, usually they had to hit the coffee, right? Uh, uh, high temperatures uh, in tanks of water and things like that. So, or by, by chemical meanings, which is very expensive. So we don't do it here. Yeah, but uh, the process is could be by heat or by chemicals to, to extract the caffeine. Yeah. That was all the questions that I have got. Does anybody else have a question for Alejandro about yeah. uh, anything you've seen? I think we've got one more here. I think, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I have a question. Um, I read somewhere, I don't remember what the details were, but it said something about the different roasts, like you were talking about light, medium, and dark, how that actually affects the con caffeine levels in coffee. Is that true? Well, no, uh, not the roast. The roasting, it, it doesn't affect the, the caffeine. After you have the, the, the coffee dried, so you roast it certain minutes and will be the French, the classic, or the dark. Mm -hmm. It goes in between like a 12 or 14 to 19 to 20 from the light roast to dark roast. It affects the taste, the taste, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what could be affect the caffeine and that is not proved, but is is the when you you put it like a like a, the the hot water like I did before. If I had the boiling water, you have a boiling water, and I apply immediately to the coffee in the bag or in the coffee maker, could uh, affect the caffeine, right? So mm. like a, you don't feel the caffeine too much. So the way they recommend or people recommend is once you boil the water, you wait two or three minutes and then you add the, the hot water to your ground coffee in order to keep this, the, the right amount of caffeine in your, in your brew, in your, in your, in your coffee, right? Okay. It's not in the toasting that that the the heat affects the caffeine, but it's when you do the brewing. When you add the hot water, there you must be careful. The water cannot be boiling because if not, so you are killing the caffeine, right? So you boil the water and then you you add to your coffee. What happened with the, with the coffee maker? The coffee maker is a problem because the coffee maker boils the water and immediately touches the ground coffee and most of the times, so mm -hmm. you, you are killing the caffeine with the coffee maker, mm. right? It doesn't happen with the French uh, press or with the, with the Café Chorreado but uh, there is another way to prepare coffee. This used in South America and also in Africa. They have the, the, let's say the water here. One is boiling. They put the water, the coffee inside the water. They wait for two minutes for the ground uh, or the, the dust to go to the bottom and then they drink it. The problem is that they add the ground coffee when the coffee is when the water is boiling so it kills part of the caffeine effect mm. yeah mm. yeah the coffee is is a whole world of caffeine there are many things to talk about coffee and uh, it's better when you do it uh, drinking coffee of course right <laughs> But uh, the coffee in this country, uh, since 1821, that we had our first export or official export of coffee, uh, it changed the history of this country. 
many buildings, many even towns were made or built with the profits of coffee, right? Uh, without coffee, that will be different history here in Costa Rica. So basically, uh, Costa Rica is related with coffee. Yeah, without that, so it will be, I don't know, somewhere. <laughs> Well, that seems like a good a good segue. Um, thank you, Alejandro, so much. And everybody's uh, saying how much they're appreciating it and really enjoyed the tour. Um, if you did enjoy this, we are actually going to be doing it again. Uh, Alejandro is going to join us a couple more weeks. Uh, next week, you're going to show us San Jose. And the week after that, the, I'm going to say it wrong, the Cajuita National Park. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about the, those experiences. The next one will be in San Jose. That is, San Jose is the capital of, of Costa Rica, is actually what uh, we see back there. That is the city of San Jose it will be in there. The idea is to cross all downtown from west to east. We are going to the central market. We are going to talk and see a medicinal plant we'll see interesting and nice historical buildings and we will walk through a beautiful urban park and see a lot of different trees and things like that uh, we'll see how is the regular day of costa ricans we will talk with people around we will see and experience the music of costa rica of different areas of costa rica so it will be a mix of many things in the city it's not only a city tour is a mix of many things about Costa Rica. And the other experience will be the jungle. We are going to the jungle. We are going to the beach and the jungle and probably we'll see a lot of animals, monkeys, uh, sloths and many other animals in the wild. So we are going to take a shower in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean Sea. It's a very remote area is almost in the border to Panama. We'll be there in the in three weeks or something, right, Emily? And uh, uh, yes. that will be yes, will be will be something out of the box. It's a very very remote area. Um, it's kind of a little Jamaica. That part of Costa Rica is completely different to the rest of the country. So we'll talk about the culture and why that area is kind of Jamaica, right? Looks like Jamaica. And yeah, well, it's a national park, and you pronounce the name good. Kawita, Kawita. It's an indigenous name. Later uh, that day, I will explain you why the name and all those things. Um, prepare for the jungle, my friends. <laughs> yeah, so that's on that's on February nineteenth. So so the February twelfth is next Saturday at eleven. Will be the tour of San Jose and all of the culture there, and then on the nineteenth will be the tour of of Kahuita National Park and the, the hopefully some monkeys and I'm excited to hear about the sloth too. The monkeys and all that, yes. <laughs> all right, all right well, my friends. If uh, you have something else, no, thank you so much. That was uh, that was really interesting <clears throat> and really wonderful. I I'm excited to go have some coffee now and and uh, not not make it too hot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, my friends. So please take care of yourself, be happy, and the most important thing. Make someone else happy, all right? All right. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy that sunshine you, for us. You too. <laughs> Bye, my friends. Bye. Thank you.